And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pits and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shot him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again, until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. <clears throat> we've been talking quite a lot about spiritual death, and we've been talking about what that means in a, just a simple way, what the second death is. We've talked so much in so many videos and done playlists and everything. I invite you to go check into those things. And the concept of death is about separation. And so by the time you have the second death coming, where you have this lake of fire, you basically have God saying, I'm permanently <clears throat> granting you the divorce that you want. That's where you get this idea of cut off destruction. It doesn't mean disappearing. It never means disappearing. And I think what a lot of people do is they pour their own meaning into the English Bibles and they never really stopped to ask the question, what did it mean when the original author in such and such language was penning this work? Which I think is really dangerous because you end up being the arbitrator of what you think is the truth based on your whims, your desires. And everything in the Bible is about letting the word of God that is inspired speak on its own. And there's quite a danger in people like Yolandi, and he's called Ninja, which I think is kind of funny because that just reminds me of a child running around going, I want to be called Ninja, <clears throat> not a grown man. But nonetheless, they're from South Africa. Josh Sparrow kind of highlighted this in some of his videos. And so there's, I've been looking at these different interesting European women and, and other women as well, and men who all have this agenda to take that which is ugly and satanic and evil, even within the transhumanism movement, and use it to push an agenda for rebellion and for what looks to me like a threat. And they always do this with these beheading things. I can think of so many videos and so many things and, you know, the Met Gala 2019 and artwork that's been highlighted and everything else. And it feels like a threat of Noahide laws coming, the sub laws, 
in the courts of justice number 16 it's very clear we've done so many videos talking about that and i just invite you to check into the channel because there's a lot of videos in there very short and to the point and with the whole threat of, of depopulation a un sponsored worldwide global depopulation you can almost sort of see their push in that movie Chappie that we've been doing a couple of videos about now, talking about all this stuff, and how these Satanists who want to save themselves by their own effort and by their own technology, it almost feels like a threat with this beheading. And they've been very vocal, certain people within the community who want transhumanism. They want to become their own gods. They want to become their own Like living robots, if you will, to be put simple. And it's a big it's a big joke. It's a big test that's coming. It's a big lie that's coming. It is the lie that Paul said is coming. And just researching who these people are and seeing all those tribal, you know, raw, natural emotion live in the seat of your emotions. Evidently, this this all comes from this whole theme of Satanism. Do do what you want. Whatever you want is good. And whatever desires you have to, to feel and to fulfill, go ahead. Because this is your world. And everybody else is just in it. And so you have these really popular people with big bank accounts. And they just go all over the place doing tours and singing and movies and other engagements and it almost feels like the more satanic they are the more outlandish society has been so accepting of that you almost get more out of your career the darker it goes and so there's a whole weirdness to these two and he they have a show as well where they're being rewarded and he is like meditating constantly. So they do videos and stuff. Th this is an older article. So a lot of this is actually new to me because my goodness, who can keep up with all this stuff? I don't know. But <clears throat> I wanted to talk for a moment about the beheading. You know, this channel isn't really afraid to bring up topics and to talk about things and to to see how the bible touches right into our very fabric of society and and how uh we we want to answer the hard questions we want to dig deep i'm i'm not about giving people milk canned answers you know milk basic you know how do we know jesus loves us we know jesus loves us i can't stand when i go and i hear sermons and I, these are you know, milk sermons. I want something deep. Feed me meat. And so that's kind of how I I try to present this channel and looking at what is being said in the sermonettes of reality in the world of pop culture and music and art. And there is a message, a strong message, directing the foot traffic of society towards a satanic Luciferian goal. Now, I'm not quite prepared to get into this article that is fairly deep and intensive that also highlights them. Uh, they had a lot of exposure when their movie for Chappie came out, and they have continued to be pushed in the press and the media, one of many, many, many souls, and they are very sold out to their worship of Lucifer and to just really be used of the devil to promote doing your own thing and creating a sense of a very hardened heart, a very stiff necked people that will be fully ready to implement whatever changes Lucifer and his antichrist and this Gaia mother earth, Android robot idol thing that they're going to be producing and this mark of the beast that's coming. So all of this is about sort of just smoothing your heart over to the point where it no longer has a, a soft exterior to hear the things of the Lord. And so they have been very effective in this, just looking at the research and seeing she really doesn't seem to have any boundaries, this one. Um, this is a this is a pretty evil that's ugly, if that makes sense. I think of a Ariana Grande going into her, you know, God is a woman and all that kind of thing as being a very pretty evil. Uh, this whole female Christ, this whole you are your own God, this this whole Crowleyan theology. I do want to show you one 
one thing in an article speaking of Crowley and, and, and how people are being taught this in a thousand different ways. I like what he says here. Uh, this is Illuminati Watcher, Rational Guide to the Irrational. He purports to be Christian. I don't know that he's born again. I don't know that he really gets it. There's a lot of people that, um, everybody's a Christian, don't you know? But I, I do like him. I think he's nice. So this was an article from quite a few years ago in 2014. Nonetheless, they have just had even more opportunity to to be used to create favorites and to to uh, push their agenda. Much could be said about this, but I, I, I want to read just this couple little things here. There's a newer group, this is in 2014, on the hip-hop scene named Di Antwood. The South African rap group consists of the rapper named Ninja and his female partner, Yoliandi Visser and DJ Hightech. <clears throat> I caught wind of this group and decided to check out their videos, and I couldn't help but notice all of the pervasive occult symbolism within. Let's take a look at this hot garbage. And it's funny that people that say that there's no occult or that there's no masonry or that there's no symbols of a, a non-linguistic language, because that's actually quite ridiculous when you really do your research. And I don't I, I don't deal with labels of conspiracy theorists. I don't I don't even deal with that. That's that's ridiculous. That's a label that the CIA made up to keep people away from questioning things that, that weren't of the norm. Uh-oh, it's magic with the K. Let's get right into it with some talk about magic. You'll notice that there's a K affixed to the end of the word magic, which denotes it is a ceremonial and ritualistic as aspect, rather. This is really important if you didn't know this. This is not the same kind of magic you'd see in the Las Vegas show from David Copperfield. Instead, and this, I'd say this is extremely important because this is exactly what the Bible says would happen with the will of man and Lucifer working together. Instead, this is an organized system where practitioners believe they shape the universe according to their will, as in Aleister Crowley's do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. So it's whatever you want. It's witchcraft that hurts others. In the occult circles that practice magic, they believe that they can, quote, shape the universe into what they want it to be. Do you see how this undergirds and pushes the transhumanism movement and how the transhumanism movement that the Vatican is on board for with Humanity 2.0? Got videos down in the channel. Go check it out. And the playlist, uh, transhumanism also pushes Satanism. They go together. They fit together. You are being manipulated to support their desires. And why wouldn't they believe this works? They are already treated like gods and goddesses and can have almost anything they want. This is just one example of why I keep harping on the music industry's place and the overall Illuminati agenda. I think he is right on with that. He, uh, one last paragraph and I got to stop here. It appears that Diewood Ant practices chaos magic, which is a more modern twist on the traditional occult magic systems, because not only does the website Ultra Culture claim it so in their video breakdown of Pitbull Terrier, but I also spotted the symbol of chaos magic in the video for Ugly Boy. See the arrows on his shirt? I I've never seen these people perform music because, oh, that's right, because I don't watch satanic stuff. I should also mention that they sampled the artist named Apex Twin for Ugly Boy, and he's known for being a follower of the ways of magic, according to the interview. So, you know, Harry Potter was introduced to your children and yay, now it's gone mainstream with this. So that was a stepping stone to this. Yay, not. And um, they do teach people, show people and guide people into transcendental meditation. Now, uh, we will pick up on some of these things a little bit later when we go delving into this more so that you can see the power of witchcraft at play within masonry, Kabbalah which is paganism, transhumanism, how it all flies together with the Vatican and, and uh, many other people in the world. I, I wanted to mention that this issue of the beheading, have you ever wondered why the Bible says people will be beheaded? What What is the reason that Satan has had this fascination with cutting your head off? Well, there's a whole thing there with victory and cutting the head off of the snake kind of a thing. King David did it when he, when he uh, killed Goliath. But even more than that, if you really dig into the New Testament, you find out that God is making this one new creation. 
and it's comprised of two pieces. Part A is Christ, who is the head. And head means ruler or proto or prototype. The first, the federal head, the big cheese, okay? The big head cheese. And then the, the body is the corresponding bride. You can also say sons of God. Those are both fine. The church, the ecclesia, the makeup of the followers. And so when they sever the head from the body, it's kind of a snotty way of going, we've separated you from God. But they haven't. 